climate change, we've all heard the name, but how many of us actually know what climate change is? And this is one of the big issues of climate change at this time. There are a lot of people who talk about climate change, but many people simply do not know about its dynamics or what it means for their particular professions. Now, I am a gamer of climate change and other sustainability issues, and I found gaming to be a fun, interactive, and educational method of getting across the message of climate change, its dynamics, and then relating climate change to the people who are involved with the games. Now, I've had the tremendous pleasure of working with different audiences in Pakistan, and I've played climate change and sustainability games with them. So I have played these games with police officers, criminologists, uh, NGOs, academics, architects, art and design experts, and kids, youths. Kids love these games because climate change is that one issue with which they'll be living throughout their lives. So during these gaming sessions, I've come across some key insights which I would like to share with you today. My key insight number one is that generally the masses are clueless about what climate change is or what our professional responsibilities are. Okay? So we have all heard some media bites about climate change like uh, you know, greenhouse gases, greenhouse effect, global warming, but many of us simply do not know what our professional roles are and how our professions can relate to climate change. So I went to the head of a police department and I asked them, would you be interested in playing a climate change game? And his first question was, what is the link between police and climate change? I said, okay, chalo, Aju, let's play, let's find out. So he was gracious enough and we played a game in Aptabad and Islamabad with some police officers, some criminologists. And while they were playing that game, then it occurred to them, all right, so we're looking at climate change induced migration. This could be a law, a law and order situation tomorrow. Okay, so over here, there's something about uh, fires caused due to heat waves. These could be law and order issues to, uh, tomorrow. Okay. Another audience, I was talking to psychologists. So when we played these games with them, it became very clear to them, all right, so if all these issues are coming up, we're looking at a, a plethora of mental health issues, climate-induced trauma, climate-induced anxiety. So we need to do something about it. So very important. And gaming gives us a very, a very useful way in which we can play, convey our message to the masses. All right. So one thing is I come up with a PowerPoint presentation so everybody in the room will be sleeping by the fifth slide. Other thing is that I play a game with them, everybody then gets engaged. All right? My key insight number two is that most of us who stay away or who live away from the oceans and the seas have no clue that 70% of planet Earth is oceans and seas. And we have no clue that our actions are polluting and destroying marine ecosystems. Are we polluting the seas and oceans? Okay, let's review some of the things you have done since morning. So we took a bath in the morning. So all that soap and shampoo which took, which took for a bath, where do you think it goes? Does it go into thin air? Achha. All the detergents and the bleaches which we use for washing our clothes, where do you think all of that lands up? Most of that lands in a sewer. From a sewer, it goes into a waterway, and eventually it makes its way to some sea or ocean. It is amazing how we are unconsciously polluting our oceans. Okay. Most of us would have come to this place on some sort of means of transport. So one tire of an average car, from its production right till its end of life, it loses about two kilograms of material through wear and tear and friction. 
Now all that material which it is losing while it is on the road, where do you think all of that lands up into? It usually gets disseminated into the nearby fields and all, or to be washed up into some water space uh, and a waterway, and eventually makes its way into some sea or ocean. So the statistics are that every second, 206 tons of plastic pollution ends up into the ocean. That is about 8 million tons of pollutants landing into our seas and oceans every year. We are also responsible for that. So very important that those of us who are away from seas and oceans, we also have in our dialogues, we also inculcate how we can stop this pollution. What can we do to prevent this? Right? Point number three, climate-induced anxiety in our youth and kids. The more we know about it, the more we know that how we are systematically destroying our planet, the more anxious our youth are getting. So I play these games with different youth and kids, and uh, a general perception which I have after in those dialogues is that our kids have been overburdened with something which they did not create. So already there are so many issues of inflation, unemployment, you know, governance issues, and then we have added to that mix climate change as well. So very, very important that when we talk to our kids and our youth about climate change, we also talk to them about hope. We give them a sense of agency that yes, you can bring about positive change. Okay? So just a few days ago, I was working with a group of kids and I was talking to them about fisheries and sustainable development and, and what all happens in the oceans and the, s and the seas. So when I talk to them about ghost fishing, when I talk to them about trawling, when I talk to them about uh, you know, how different ways in which uh, bycatch fishing, they were visibly distressed and they kept asking me. So we actually catch fish they die, and then many of those which we cannot sell in our geographical jurisdiction, we just throw it. So the turtles, the dolphins, and all, if we can't sell them in the market, we just throw them back into the sea. They were so visibly distressed, but this is what is actually happening. So very, very important that when we talk to our youth, we give them messages of hope as well, that good things are also happening. Okay. Point number four. Have you ever heard about methane? You know, we talk a lot about carbon dioxide, but we're not having dialogues about methane. Now, methane is a major greenhouse gas. It is a toxic pollutant in Pakistan. Methane combines with other toxic pollutants and pollutes the quality of our air. But we don't have many dialogues about it. The irony is that Pakistan has the fourth largest cattle herd in the world. When these cows and buffaloes, when they burp, they create a lot of methane, and uh, that is just released in the atmosphere. It stays in the atmosphere for short periods of time, but it has its effect. Likewise, our agricultural activities, for example, the burning of stubble, and uh, you know rice paddies, they also create a lot of methane. But we have not had many dialogues about methane. Our policies are very carbon focused. There's another dimension to this as well. Throughout the world, there is now a thought that we need to moderate our meat consumption because of the water footprint, because of the you know, rearing of cattle, about the processing of meat, and while cooking meat, a lot of water is used. So we need, need to moderate our meat consumption. No such dialogue is still taken place, at least I don't know, the public uh, dialogue is still not taken place in Pakistan. I hope we can inspire such dialogue. Right? And the final thing. All of us have heard this time and again over the last few years, this narrative that Pakistan only contributes 1% of the global greenhouse gases, 
but we are a major victim of the climate crisis. But this narrative, which has been repeated again and again, is self-defeating, and we have become a victim of this narrative. So very educated people, we play these games with them, they understand the whole dynamics of climate change, but then they repeat this narrative that we are only responsible for 1% of the global greenhouse gases, why should we do some action? So this narrative is driving us towards inaction. What it does not explain is that even after 75 years of independence, why is so much of our water polluted? What is the quality of air in our cities? Why are they so polluted? This is not due to the result of any other person's action. This is the result of our own inaction. So very, very important that we bring in those narratives which are empowering and which move us towards action, not towards an action. Climate change is something with which we live for the rest of our lives. So the first thing which we can do is that we can educate people about what climate change is and what are its dynamics. And that can be easily done using gaming. So let us put a big smile on our faces. Let us counter climate change. Let us make the world a better place to live for our future generations. Thank you very much. Have a great day.